、えー、ヨーカソムービーダンスター。今日はシーン、ヨトロマンニーツウィテック。私はジョー・ラスコトです。And I'm Sean Coon, I guess. <笑>
all types of supernatural and alien stuff and kaiju stuff. So it's like a big mix huh. of stuff. It's almost like Twilight Zone meets the X-Files. Because we do get, I mean, we don't really see it in the movie, but there is one kaiju they show in the beginning that is just like a giant plant. Yeah, well, that comes from Ultra Q. Okay, okay. Um, and there's a, we'll get to him. Yeah, yeah. I just, you mentioned that. That's yeah. what immediately what I'm thinking of. Yeah, which I, which I jumped out of my seat. I was very excited <laughs> uh, when, I, when I saw that. The original SSSP was science, a special science special search party. That's there a it is. Twister. That's a fucking mouthful. Oh ain't my it? god! Um, Peter picked those pickles. Yeah. And now in the uh, Sheen Ultraman, it's S class species suppression, which yeah, okay, makes sense. Yeah. Protocol. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. Right. We forgot that part. <laughs> we forgot the Pete. So yeah, like I was saying about Ultra Q, you know, it was a big, it was a huge hit. Um, but um, as uh, the kaiju got more popular around then. They decided to do Ultraman. So originally, uh, Eiji Tsuburaya had the idea to do this Ultraman series um, to involve kaiju and aliens and all this whole story arc. Um, and we got Ultraman. And in Ultraman, and you reuse a bunch of stuff like uh, set pieces, like the miniatures and uh, costumes and stuff from Ultra Q and Godzilla. Okay. Um. So yeah, there's so it's there's a callback to that in this but, oh. but it's not the same monster that they use the Godzilla suit for in the original Ultraman series. Okay, I did look that up when I was doing a little research on the movie and I was like, "Huh, that's kind of cool." Good yeah. way to cut corners and, and and like make it work. Yeah, no, it's really fun though because they spent all this time making these effects so they kind of cobbled them together and like reused it with the addition of new costumes I mean, and stuff. I mean, I get it. I mean, Toho's got all this stuff. It's yeah. like, why not? Basically, uh, Jiris was the was the monster that was mm. like the Godzilla suit. I believe it was the head from Godzilla versus Abira or Abira Terror of the Deep, you know, uh, Godzilla versus the sea monster, one of your faves, I think. As a kid, it actually was, yeah, but on a rewatch, it. I was like, damn, this is I remember is bad. you loved that one. I mean, that's a good one. Eh, the, the final fight's good. I just, the story doesn't really hold up the Red for me Bamboo that well. and stuff? Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind, kind of, of, kind of I'll revisit it. I'll give it another shot. So it was the head from uh, Abira, Terror from the Deep, or Monster of the Deep. I forget exactly what the original title is. And then the suit bottom was from Godzilla vs. Mothra. Mm. And uh, then they put like this big frill on it. Yes. It, it definitely, if you look up pictures of it, or maybe you're already familiar with it, it definitely looks like Godzilla with some shit tacked on it. Yeah. And and they do do a homage to that character in the intro here. And I feel like they, you still kind of get the gist that it's like riffing on Godzilla, but I like the way they kind of update it. Uh, it it's cool. Well, it's funny because what you're saying about the intro guy, that's Gomez. And he is the oh. first kaiju. So that's to, not even the same thing? That's not even oh. the same thing. But what's funny about that is Gomez is the first kaiju to appear in the ultra q series in the first episode he comes oh. out and that opening bit is gomez coming out of uh that that mining plant or whatever right. it is which is very godzilla-esque but it's hilarious because they use the shin godzilla suit and like glue a bunch of shit on it oh yeah <laughs> so it's like a homage within a homage yes yeah, it's, it's pretty great <laughs> well, that's pretty good it's pretty cool and then there's various monsters from sure. uh, ultra q and ultraman like in the beginning uh, so that, I thought that was kind of neat. So this is directed by Shinji Higuchi, mm. who also did uh, Shin Godzilla. Right. Of he course. also did, I saw the live action Japanese Attack on Titan movies from he a few years back. He did both of them. He also did our uh, friend uh, to children everywhere, Gamera. Really? Yeah, he did Attack of Legion. Uh, Gamera, the new Gamera series, the High High series was... Uh, Attack of Legion and uh, the Revenge of Iris. And I saw he was, I, I forget if he was the writer or director or something, but he worked on one of the Evangelion movies. He worked on, he worked on Revival and um, the end of okay. Evangelion, yeah. Which he worked with uh, Hideaki Anno. Oh, yeah. okay. Or an owl, however you say I, it. I think it's an owl. Might be an owl. Yeah. He also directed a movie that I bought on Blu-ray before I had a Blu-ray player. I don't know if you remember this. I think we watched it together. Death Kappa? It was like a kaiju the name movie. Sounds very familiar. It was a kaiju movie from like the early two thousands. It's fucking great. It's I'm a, guessing it's a giant kappa uh, or something to that effect. Well, it grows big at the end. Yeah, it's okay. it's fucking wacky. Is it a kappa though? I'm assuming it's yeah. got to be. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's the you know the 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 duck build. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. The classic folklore monster yokai, with the fucking bowl yeah. in his head. Is he considered yokai? Oh yeah. He's more like a cryptid, isn't he? They're all yokai. I guess so. Does it fall into that? 
I mean, I guess don't quote me on it, but I'm almost positive. Yeah, but Yokai or Ghost, do they I, fall? I, I feel like I've watched a lot of anime and read a lot of manga where Kappa appear or or things are supposed to be allusions to Kappa. Like, there's like a character in One Piece who's yeah. basically a Kappa. There's a ton of stuff. There's a lot of horror, which I guess yeah. makes sense with Kappas and stuff like that. And a lot of like comedy versions of Kappas, like in like uh, Yokai Watch and stuff like that. I I, I, I'm just, I think it's a Yokai. I think it's e- a Yokai. Even in Kaku Ranger, they do the Kappa thing it, too. Okay, I don't remember the semantics. I'm not trying to go on, on, on a yokai lesson No, 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 here. no, but I think, but I, I think you're right. I, I think, think it has right. something to do with bridges or water specific. I mean, <laughs> one if of you know anything about capas, maybe that goes I do. Saying, one but. of the legends is like, so in Japan, the toilets used to be over a river. Oh, okay. And used, and used to go in them and used to shit or piss in them and then it would take it downstream. But one of the stories was the Kappa, if you were in there, I forget exactly what the circumstances are, but they would reach through your ass and like grab your soul out. Oh, yeah. yeah. That makes me think of that fucking guy in Majora's Mask. Oh. The fucking <laughs> hand coming out of the toilet. Yo, that's what, he, yeah. Is that what was referencing? I need some toilet paper, but he wants to steal your soul. Maybe. Exactly. Could be. Uh, Yokai are fucking cool. <laughs> Some of my favorite uh, uh, ghost lore. Yeah, right? very cool. I guess, like, I guess, I guess, entities and like yeah. f- f- Japanese cryptids, for lack of a better yeah, term, it, it fits under that it's category. Be- it's always between them and, and like the Romans or the Greeks for me. It's like who's yeah. got the best shit? I, Egypt's got some good stuff too. But uh, dude, I digress. Ireland's got some good shit. Well, Scotland's everybody's got, some got something. Ones. Yeah, the old world, except stuff. for America. We 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 just. Bad on him. Borrowed yeah. from all the other countries. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say something that I would have regretted, so I li- I'll leave it at that. <laughs> and this is written by Hideaki Anno. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So, who, who obviously created the Evangelion series. Yes, yes. Um, And he also wrote uh, this movie and Shin Godzilla, and he's writing uh, Shin Kamen Rider, which I'm really oh, excited yeah. for. Um, I think I'm even more excited for that than Ultra. Like, I love Ultraman, but Shin Kamen Rider is like, now, I think that's going to be fucking I, ins- I, incredible. I've actually seen some Common Rider. Yeah. I still don't fully understand how it works because I'm not like deep into it. Like, again, I don't want to go off on a side tangent about a different property. Yeah, I'm not because I want to talk about this movie. But like, as Common Rider, sometimes he's by himself, but sometimes he has a team. Does he always have a team? We'll get into okay. it because we, inevitably we're going to cover Sheen Common Rider. Sure. Okay. When, when it and comes out, and then we'll out. talk all okay. about it. Um, but just parallel to that, I also heard rumblings. I don't know if this is true or, sure. or true or not, but they're going to do a Sheen Super Sentai movie, which which one do you pick? Do you, are, like, are they going to do Go Ranger? Because, like... I feel like you got to do the original, right? Because Shin Ultraman is based off the first iteration of Ultraman, like the first Ultraman series. Um, so, like, if they do... Uh, what is it? Himitsu Sentai Go Ranger? I mean, I've never seen it, but, again, like, you got to start at the beginning, right? Well... Is, I mean, you don't have to. There's so many goddamn Sentai series. Put it this way. This movie's so long that... And, th- <laughs> and this is, like, 35 episodes put together. Go Ranger's 84 episodes. I guess I'll say this, though. How many of that? Maybe this is the same for Ultraman, I guess. Tell me. Yeah. I'm assuming on some well, level yeah, because there's Monster of the Week shit, too. There's a lot of Monster yeah. of the Week shit. I mean, that's how they fill it out. No, I, yeah. mean, I mean, a lot of shows. X-Files always does that. Yeah, and the Sentai series does that all the time. I mean, usually we're talking like 50 to 65 episodes for Sentai. I mean, it's still an unbelievable amount of content to fit in one film, but I feel like if you oh, trim a lot of the monster fights out, you could, you, could, you could streamline it a little. Yeah, the overarching yeah. story for sure. I mean, it can't be worse than the three American movies. <laughs> um, I don't want to talk about. Well, there was already movies. There's already Sentai movies because they oh. would they would do well, that. They did they, that one with like a ton of them a few years back. There's like there's Common Rider movies too, and they would do like in betweeny oh. movies. There's even a Sentai Common Rider team up movie too. I'm pretty That's sure. That's fun. There may be crossover with Ultraman. I'm not entirely mm-hmm. sure. Probably. Um, See, I always thought Ultraman was part of like Godzilla, but then I was like, "Oh no, that's Jet Jaguar." No, actually, the first this first series that we that that we were just been talking about was its own isolated thing until because the next series was Ultra Seven, which mm-hmm. was like a separate series, and then Return of Ultraman reinstated the original Ultraman and then became a series about Ultraman. Got ya, got ya. So you know how Sentai changes teams oh, and yeah, everything yeah. each time and doesn't reference the other one, and then later they end up like crossing over and sure. shit like that. Yeah. Okay. So the way that they adapt or go about adapting uh, the 66 Ultraman, I think, is pretty damn faithful. And and I feel like Higuchi like, really appreciated the original series. I mean, we even had the pleasure. We got, we got to see this in the theater, which was yes. amazing. And they had like uh, Ultraman trivia and stuff before. That was kind of cool. It was cool. But they had interviews with uh, Higuchi and I believe um, the guy who plays Ultraman, which we'll get to. And... Um, you know, he was like when he was a kid, he'd watch Ultraman and it was like the it was like the greatest show on Earth. So he mm-hmm. wanted to kind of pay uh, homage uh, to that. You know what I mean? So uh, and he does, I think, success- successfully. But that being said, there aren't too many changes from mm-hmm. this to 
the the but, Sheen Ultraman movie. As far as like the main plot points go. Yeah. The one big change that I thought was interesting was like if you look on the figure or, or any of the figures or even on the Ultraman box. Oh, the chest. Or, or even right here. There's a the, that's the color timer. So like hmm. when he gets when Ultraman gets low power, that starts flashing. And he like gets small again. He like loses his power. Okay, because they, they they do infer in the movie that that he does eventually lose power because he's he's outputting so much or absorbing so much. Yeah. He just he can't maintain it forever. Yeah. So instead of the color timer, he literally like because he has the red and silver, it literally like drains and he becomes like one color. Okay, so was that almost like I guess then a homage to other versions of the character that were different colors, or was that just a, a an artistic choice? No, that's just like his color timer okay got you, got you know you. what i mean as he because they even say that well he loses power and he gets he gets like you know he fades his sure color fades. I, i'm just asking because i don't i know yeah. sometimes when these series have different versions they sometimes update the suit and if he i don't know if he was always red that's I, I can't say because maybe in the mm. other in the in the newer ultraman that shit happens oh, okay. I, I don't really know i'm not i'm not the word on Ultraman. sure but i think you're probably right but i love this, the this old is stuff. A, a call back to the original yeah. for sure and there's a lot dude i mean i haven't even seen all the sentai series because mm. there's like I don't one know. every year, one every few years. I mean, the and... new one's coming out th- yeah. this year, um, which is the first. It, it's funny because Shin Kamen Rider's coming out, but then they're also doing the first insect-based oh. Sentai series this year. Oh, I saw pictures which of that. It looks pretty cool. interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm psyched. I, I might watch it. Give it a shot. What the Hell fuck? Maybe yeah. we'll do some Patreon content. Oh on man, it. that would be fun covering the new Sentai series. Uh, it's an idea. Nah, there's I, so many. Sign me up. I'm not. I'm not committing to it, but it's, it sounds fun. It's it's been tough because like it's been a daunting task because there's so many of them. True. There's so many series. I mean, maybe we can cherry pick. I mean, I mean not, not to talk too much behind the scenes yeah. stuff, but it's like it's something that I feel like we've we've talked about on and off yeah. over the years of maybe covering it in some capacity, but we'll see. Yeah. Let us know. I mean, is that something yeah. you guys want to see? Seriously, though. I mean, I want to talk about either it. Either Patreon or, or maybe it, it has enough people who are interested. Maybe we'll just do it as a show. I don't know. But uh, with that being said, let's show it some spirit. I can't tell you how cozy it is to see that big Toho logo come up on the big screen like I was so excited that we were able to see it yeah. in the theater Chris Barr from Talks of the Dark Side yes um, <laughs> had sent me uh, a rip of it because mm. it, it like leaked early online and Fortunately, I did not watch it. I was saving it. We were going to review it anyway. Um, but well, I know then, it also did come out last year, so I'm sure it's out there in some capacity anyway. Yeah, well, in, in Japan, Japan, in I Japan, mean, I'm yeah. talking about US yeah, release because yeah. like this is you can't even get this in the stage. You can only you could only see it in, on the okay. Fathom unless you have a rip of it. Sure. Um, <laughs> so uh, Shout Factory got the rights to do a Fathom event for it. And they mm. probably, they did it for two days and we went to go see it and it was it was great. And uh, yeah, that big, the Toho logo comes up on the screen and it was just, it's so fucking cool. And they do like the old school, like uh, Ultra Q, like uh, paint swirl. I mean, it's digital now, but uh, it, it comes up, but it says Shin Godzilla. Oh, that was and funny. Then it, and then it like quickly cuts and says Shin Ultraman. Yeah. That's definitely some like stuff just to be like, yeah, the audience gets what yeah, they're doing it's, there. It's yeah. pretty that cool. Was fun. And then we get the Gomez callback and all the Ultra Q stuff in the yeah. beginning. And we, we show, we you know, and we see the SSSP, um, you know, destroying monsters and stuff. So basically the gist of, I don't know if you want to plot crunch this. Yeah, or... I mean, this is an interesting one to plot crunch because it's kind of like three story arcs over the course of this movie. Well, it's the entire. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. However many, 35. I don't even know how many episodes the first yeah, one Yeah, but I, I, I'm just saying specifically if I were to break it down. like So the, like the first third of the movie or like the first hour of the movie is kind of like your big setup. Uh, where where you kind of get introduced to all your characters. Ultraman crashes on Earth while they're, you know, basically Kaiju are attacking, and he becomes kind of the new protector of Earth uh, for, through fighting these monsters. Nobody else can fight them. And, you know, there's, there's other aliens that come in that try to, like, trick the humans and undermine Ultraman. And he fights them. And, you know, there's a little bit more to it than that, but a lot of the drama in the back half of the movie has to do with the fact that when he crash-landed on Earth, he fused with a human... And back on his home planet, that's a big no-no. And <laughs> he's not even supposed to be here, <laughs> right? Well, on top of all yeah. of that, uh, and there's a lot of politic reasoning for that mm-hmm. uh, that this character Melfis talks about later on, and it kind of culminates in this 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 situation where like Ultraman fucked up so bad by doing this that like the people back on his planet are like, we're just gonna blow up this whole universe. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> fuck the humans. A- and then Ultraman and the humans try to figure out how to stop it. Yeah. So like I said, it's like three different stories kind of packed together, but they all kind of are connected again which makes sense if it's the first series they're all poignant yes. and there there is like a first second and third act i guess that's a better way to which, put it yeah. which is like three 
like half hour, 40 minute episodes because this movie's like two hours and 10 minutes or 30. It's almost three hours or some shit like that. Nah, it's two hours. It's two hours yeah, and change? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, I fucked up the math on that. But anyway, it's like three episodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Um, where, whereas like, you know, the first half of the movie or the first, the first quarter of the movie or the first third of the movie, excuse me, is a, uh, we're getting to know Ultraman yeah. and stuff like that and like what he's doing here and all that kind of stuff. And man, we get some fucking dope ass fights. Now, here's the thing with this. I don't the only my only gripe with this movie is that Ultraman and the and the monsters are CGI. I okay. wish it, I wish it was guys in suits, but what the cool thing is is that the CGI models are modeled to look like guys in suits. <laughs> so think, they look like the monsters. I, I think they accomplish it. I mean, that drill monster he fights is the only one where it kind of gets lost a little for me. Yeah, maybe. In a couple a couple parts. Because like the first monster he fights, um okay, let me set up some of these characters. Yeah, first. yeah, sure. Go ahead. I gotta read these off my phone. Yes, so go for it. Bear it's with me. It's okay. So we have our main character, technically, Shinji Kamanaga, who <laughs> is this guy, he actually goes to save a child who's about to get, like, creamed by this monster. Yeah. And in the process, when Ultraman lands, kind of is just like, wow, this guy was really brave. I'm going to take over his body, essentially. Yeah. Live as him, you know, because he's half alien, half human. They explain it. Which, again, is a big no-no. Right. Then there's kind of, like, it's the secondary main character is uh, Hiroko Asami. Mm -hmm. And she's the one that does the butt slapping. Yes. Oh, she's, she's, she's like the comedy relief, but also Shinji's partner. Right. And she kind of moves the plot along for mm -hmm. the most part. Yeah. Uh, we also have the the leader, uh, Kimio Tamura, who's kind of just like always pushing his team in the direction of like, let's figure this out and defending them against the government who just doesn't believe what they're doing is the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we also just I'll, I'll name off the, the final two who are a little lesser as far as the main characters. Like they have things to do in the movie, but they're they're more like comedy relief characters. Yeah. Are uh, Yumi Funaberi, who's a biologist and Akashi Taki, who is a engineer of some kind. But the, the big thing with him that they bust his chops about is that he loves uh, Star Trek and yeah. otaku kind of stuff. <laughs> But they're all working together in the SSSP to, to, to yeah. stop the kaiju. Yumi's hilarious too because she like when she gets upset, she like stress eats and stuff. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's really when fun. they get locked in the hotel later in the movie. Yeah, she's yeah. like opening the bag of chips. That's a great thing. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, there's, it's a great group of characters yes, though, and yes. and you fall in love with like all their different like quirks, quirks and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and and it works really well in de defeating the kaiju of 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 you know the yes. movie and stuff. So, so. Kamenaka goes to save that kid mm -hmm. and is wiped out by the explosion of the impact of Ultraman. Yeah. It comes up like a fucking meteor. And it, it here he comes from the sky. Is that is that a song? Ultraman. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ultra, which, the music, by the way, I'm assuming is a lot of stuff referencing those old shows. Well, or is it? It was a very new. Well, no, that that's the theme from the. 66. No, I know what you're saying. I'm oh, saying yeah. the music in the movie. Because um, Shin Godzilla, I mean, I haven't watched it since yeah. it came out, but I remember like it wasn't the Godzilla theme, but it was like it felt like it. If that makes well, sense. Well, it was Akira Fubuke's mm -hmm. score, and then somebody else, I think, like. Use oh, I guess that's like, what I mean. Use yeah. it again, but there are new music elements. Sure, in it. sure. Um, I'm not sure. A lot of it sounds sounds old, mm. older, like or I don't know if that. they reused it. Or I didn't look that up. Sure, but it's cozy and it yeah. fits right. They never use the theme song though, uh, or even smatterings of it, okay. which I thought was kind of weird. But hey, that's fine. I love when he comes down and fucks this fucking monster up. Oh this, man, this, this this thing can turn invisible and it's like sucking up electricity. Yeah, and at first it's like, all right, well, you know, Ultraman's gonna win, but how is he gonna win? Yeah, and this thing's shooting electricity at him. He's just <laughs> fucking walking towards it, <laughs> and he what has he he does the fucking the the, the beam. He does the yeah, he does the spacium beam. Yes. Oh my, this is so cool. Yeah, and he fucking shoots this thing in the face. <laughs> And it like flies through the fucking trees and explodes. And it's this massive fucking explosion, like where the other characters are at, like in the military base, like miles away. Like the fucking place is all shaking. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they're and like Taki's like the air turned to plasma. How hot was that beam? And it's like you just see like the air reverberating. There's a fucking crater in yeah. the mountain behind him. Naranga, I think, is this one's name. Oh, okay. And what what's cool about this scene too? Not only does Ultraman blow it away, but like you he, see he you see the it. teamwork of like how the team does all their stuff and like researches it and tries to find the monster's weakness yes. and like uh, how to destroy it, what it feeds on, what are its weak points are. Right, because like that. in that intro that we, we talked about yeah. a little bit, like we sh they show like 
six or seven monsters that they figure out how to kill. And they fucking nuked them. Yeah, they nuke them. There's one, that, there's like a penguin one. They that freeze them. Yeah, uh, there's that plant one. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting how they found different ways to kill. It kind of made me think of like a Pacific Rim a little bit. Yeah. Um, it was cool though because it's all human driven. Like we yes. devised ways to destroy them. We didn't need outside help. Which is a pertinent plot point at the end yeah. of the movie actually. And because we don't, because Japan doesn't necessarily have a hero. Right. Yeah. Which is a which is also a big plot point. Yes. So yeah, he kills that and you know, it takes him a little while to figure out that Kaminaga is actually Ultraman because he's like, you know, he was already kind of a guy that kind of kept to himself and now he's just like sitting there reading book after book after book to he, learn. He is like Johnny Five reading yeah. these fucking books, man. He's like, in the library just going through every book. Yeah, he's also like, so like Ultraman and like the Planet of Light and stuff like, uh, they have like these, this crazy like advanced technology. Sure. And, but they're very up on like the humans, like how far we've come. You know mm. what I mean? Like they're watching us kind of thing. Yeah, they're watching us and it's that age old thing of like, how the aliens are keeping an eye on us, making sure how advanced we get because we're so fucking dangerous, kind of thing. You know, which, what I mean? which is a which comes into play later. Well, it's also a classic sci-fi trope. Oh, one hundred percent, yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's there's some shenanigans in between there. Where you start to meet some more of the characters, you get the butt slapping and all that. Oh, that that fucking shit is so funny when she does that. Uh, it, it's and she does it a few times, and every time it's funny. There's one where she just like kind of grabs her thighs, like when she's sitting down. I was like, ah, does that count? Is that a butt slap? I don't know. Does it? Yeah, that's pretty good. But uh, they they go to fight this other monster. I don't remember what the fuck it's called, but there's a good joke in there. Where it's, called, like, it's called Gabora. Gabora. Not Gabara. Oh, two very different things. Gabara obviously. is all monsters attack. Oh. <laughs> that sweet fucking unicorn looking cat monster. Oh, yeah. So it's vaguely and familiar. then and then Gabora is this one. It's okay. the same thing with Baragon and Barugon. One's a slight a, difference. One's a Gamera villain. One's a Godzilla villain. Okay, but I like this one because ally, whatever. They they talk about how there was another monster in the intro that was powered by like nuclear energy. This one's nuclear energy. Yes. Yeah. But they talk in the intro that there was one previously. Oh, and that they destroyed. Yeah. And yeah, the, yeah. The fallout was like crazy. And they make a joke. Uh, well, why is it called this? Like, where do you, how do you come up with the names? Like, ah, the director just, <laughs> just says it and we just roll with it. Which is funny because that's how they were named in the original series. Uh. Because like they would get into a room and they would write the scripts and not have a name for the monster or what they look like. And basically it was determined by how fast or what they were capable of doing in the special Fair effects enough. department and slapping together. Fair and enough. they were like, oh, I don't know, Gabora, there you go. Uh, well, he, well, he's Gaboring under the ground. <laughs> oh yeah, he's Gaboroing. Uh, he's, he's like this drill monster. With Ganorm. <laughs> hey, and Norm, they're hanging out. He's his cousin. Hey, you sure you're going to come back for, for Christmas? I'll be there. I'm just taking a trip to Japan. Don't worry about it. Shabba. Gets fucking thrown to the sun. Uh, or something. We, I guess we never find out. It's it's possible. Uh, heavily implied. Yes. But yeah, he's this drill monster. Or it, he's I guess I should fucking say. cool, man. He's drilling through the ground. He finally like, gets to the, Dude, the nuclear plant. Dude, there's stealth bombers they borrow from the U.S. Oh, yeah. They're dropping shit on it. does nothing. Yeah, the U.S. are like, oh, no, we're out. Bye. <laughs> we just spent $80 billion. It did nothing. See ya. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, and then Ultraman shows up, and uh, there's a pretty cool fight scene there at like a dam. Oh. I, I will say all the locations. It's for a the nuclear. Fights. It's a nuclear power plant. Oh, if, he, oh. if he permeates that wall, the right. nuclear uh, shit will right. like leak it's out. It's a dam that's holding. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, it's kind of a nuclear cool fight waste. sequence because at first Ultraman comes in, and I, I have to just assume this is a classic Ultraman move. This like. 1280 fucking spin or whatever he does he just, that looks like a video game glitch. It's awesome, dude. And kicks the shit out of this monster. Dude, he flips in and fucking kicks him across the screen. Oh it's my so God. good. Flies into like a mountain or something. Yeah. So this thing's got a huge drill on its head. He looks like yeah. that guy from Street Sharks. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he ends up like trying to drill Ultraman. He like grabs his... That part's cool. He grabs his... Uh, you know, his horn and he's drilling him. He's, and he, you know, he's, he's doing a boom. He's, yeah, boom. he's hitting the fucking dam. The, you got me saying damn now. The radiation <laughs> place. Sorry. It does look like a damn. It kind of does. So Ultraman kicks his ass a little bit, punches him off. This fucking drill like opens up and becomes like two things. Oh, yeah, that was cool. And it's and he like he, he braces himself with his like back drill it's against fucking the mountain. Cool, man. His fucking head opens like a flower and he's got his little, little mouth inside, little head. And then it takes a page out of Godzilla's fucking handbook. Oh, yeah. Fucking starts shooting nuclear breath at, at Ultraman. Dude. Ultraman's just like, boop, don't, it doesn't affect me. <laughs> so this is the first time we see Ultraman, like, kind of, like, his power waver a bit. A little bit, because, yeah. Because, like, as he's getting hit with the radiation, like, the color's draining from him. Right, he starts turning green. Yeah, so he, start, he starts, like, walking. Now, he's taking this fucking radiation blast full bore, and he's just walking This is, like, some Superman it. shit. Like, it's Superman awesome. Get, I think it was Man of Steel or one of them, where the guy's <laughs> shooting with a machine gun, and he's just walking towards him. Dude, he oh. walks up, and he punches this thing in the fucking head, and it just drops like a oh. sack. Of potatoes. It, it's a one-hit KO. It's awesome. 
Um, and then to like save everybody from the nuclear fallout, he like right. takes the monster and like flies it somewhere, somewhere into Either, the sun, I, like Sean was saying, or or, or the Plank uh, brain or whatever the fuck that thing's <laughs> called. And then Asami figures out that like, um, you know. Ultraman's there to help because like there's back and forth where Ultraman's a bad guy because there's also this other alien that shows up. Zarab. Yeah, Zarab. Right. Or Zarab, however who, you want to say it. Who has control over technology. Fucking crazy, man. It, it, it's kind of a great scene because it's like the, all their computers get wiped from like a brownout. Yeah. And then Zarab shows up and he's like this alien with a fucking trench coat with and a hat, hat on. I love it so much, uh, man. That was great. And yeah. he basically tells him like, yeah, you know, I can help you. And he like fixes it. And, you know, he's like, I'm oh, sorry about that. Zip, 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 zip. And everything comes back. Of course, the SSSP is like immediately like, all right, this is a little weird. But the government's like, oh, please, we'll, we'll, we'll work with you. You're going to give us technology. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's right on the dotted line now. Yeah. All you got to do is kill Ultraman. And it's like, Right. <laughs> well, okay. So there's two parts to that. Um, first, when he transforms, this is like the second episode, by the way. Oh, okay. If you're looking at it like an, an, an episodic yeah. thing in a two hour block, and this is like half hour into the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So before that, though, before Zareb shows up, uh, it's it's found out that Kamenagi is Ultraman. And he's like nowhere to be found. Yeah, like he's MIA some... because they want to lock him up. Right. And there was like a deer camera or something that caught him, and then it's like all over YouTube. Yeah. Because so, he uses his beta capsule and like grows big from uh, Kamenaga. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And there's also like this stuff that's kind of peppered out throughout the film where you find out that, you know, he is a different being and he's basically using Kamenaga's appearance because Kamenaga's just corpse just laying it's in the just fucking in the, woods. It's like preserved like Snow White uh, yeah. in the fucking woods. And it's like he kind of goes back there a few times like and, and kind of has a moment to himself and he even meets with a character at the end. But Because he's not supposed to be doing it. So he has like this kind of like, crisis yes, with it, yes. you know? But just to get back to the, the plot at yeah, hand, so uh, Zareb's trying to fool everybody, and he even kidnaps Ultraman, and he starts imitating him very much like a Godzilla kind of thing, but I don't know who came up with that concept first. Maybe it was Ultraman. Oh, the no, fake, The fake Ultraman. No, no that is like, I, I mean, it might be. Yeah. But but uh, yeah, Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla, I think, is still the best iteration it's, Well, of sure, When sure. he beats the shit out of Anguirus, I love that scene. But it's one of those, so it's it, 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 and even Godzilla versus Kong kind of did that mm-hmm. a little bit. So it's been done a million times. But yeah. this is like obviously they they did this in the sixties. Yeah, uh, and it's, it's fun. It's fun. I like and it. and I like that eventually. Like uh, Asami figures out where Ultraman is because he he mails her the 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 transformer mm-hmm. in anticipation of being captured by Zareb. Yeah, because Zareb wants it to basically control the planet and and wipe out the humans. And uh, so he he pretends to be Ultraman and starts fucking shit up. It's pretty great. Ultraman I, I, whips his ass, by dude, the way. It's so cool because like Ultraman's there and he like inside the inside the place where he's being held, like he gets yeah. the beta capsule and just like explodes out of it and just starts whooping this thing's ass. And then it like <laughs> he, like it is a beat down. Oh, oh, he slaps him down, yeah, for sure. But then he turns back into like giant Zara. Yeah. And they're like fucking flying all over the place, fighting each other and shit. And then Ultraman ends up like throwing a fucking spacium buzzsaw and cuts him in half. I, and I'm sitting in the theater like, that's it. <laughs> what the fuck are they gonna do next? That's the end. Then the rest of the movie happens. And then and then another fifty five minutes. And happened. then another. And then but, the third episode. But I happens. didn't know that there was more to it. I was like, wow, you killed the main villain in the first hour. That's yeah. a little. That's pretty weird but okay so so Mephilus comes down and we find out that Zarab was like a servant of his and like you know his like underling and but but Mephilus is a little smart because he comes down just in a human form immediately yes and Mephilus is played by Koji Yamamoto just by the way and he's mm-hmm. he's great he's funny as hell in this movie uh, I love his gimmick where he'll he'll like say like a quote from like a famous book or like a famous person and he'll say, one of my favorite quotes, <laughs> one of my favorite lines. And, and then later, That's he, one of my favorite sayings. Uh, oh, one of my favorite. And then later there's like a scene where he gets like uh, uh, Ultraman gets one over on him and he's like, he's like, the ends justify the means. One of my least favorite sayings. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, All right. So it's like a running gag. That's yeah. really great. And he has um, a beta of giant beta capsule like. Right, because you because f- he's an alien, but so is so is Ultraman's people. Mm. But Ultraman's people have been able to like it's basically like, um, you know, like an old brick cell phone versus like an iPhone sure, <laughs> kind sure. of thing, where it's like you know he has the beta capsule and he can activate it, but it's this giant fucking coffin sized thing. Whereas Ultraman has like the little one. Like he's got he the just, neuralizer. Yeah, basically. He's, yeah, basically. But 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 like the beta box is is what makes him yeah. big, yeah. Or, or the technology, yes. Because there's like this whole thing where Asami disappears, and then she's like walking down fucking street like the hundred foot woman. Oh man, there's some bore people out there like this is great. I love it. 
looking up her skirt. Oh, God, dude, me. that's hilarious because I mean like, that is something that actually does happen. But that's a fucking great gag. Be- so Asami's walking around and she's gigantic, and it's basically that's Gulliver's travels. Yeah, but it's basically for Mephilus to like show his power. Yeah. and what he could offer to the humans. Yeah. So he then makes her small again. And then the next day, like on the internet, it's just like shots of her, like up her skirt and like videos of every angle. And he's like, she's like, oh my God, my life is ruined. I think that's when she grabs their ass on the side. (laughs) And he deletes it all because I guess these aliens have technology powers. Mephilus is just like, oh, sorry about that. Uh, Deleted all everybody's phone for fuck's sake. It's like, yes. I wonder if he got it on like a VCR or something. They did like the the tape in there to record. Well, maybe it's magnetic tape. We could erase it. Uh, We never find out. (laughs) But yeah, so it kind of comes to a head, like the Mephilus storyline, because the government's kind of signing on with him immediately, just like they did with Zareb. Yeah, they have to, so they have to, again, it's it's disavowing Ultraman, Ultraman, yeah. and they're going to get rid of Ultraman or whatever, and they're basically signing it over so that they have the beta box to fight Ultraman or whatever to, like, stop him. Right. But <laughs> Mephilus' plan is to use the people of Earth as bioweapons right. by making them gigantic. Well, or or the threat of them being able to do that so that the, they'll basically be like, oh, yeah, you're not supposed to really do that, so uh, we're just going to wipe you out. Well, no, he wants to harvest them. Oh, he do- oh yeah, you're Mephilus right. Mephilus yeah, wants yeah, to yeah, harvest yeah. them to, like, take over the fucking universe or something. Right, right. Okay, I'm getting a little ahead of myself there. Yeah, and then, and then, um, and then he consults Ultraman, and Ultraman's like, I'm, no. Yeah, we're, we're not. Yeah. I'm not working with you. Like, fuck you. Like, I now I'm half human. And there's this great scene in the bar. Yes, where they're talking and like how because Ultraman has merged with a human, he's got human feelings and like the er, the will to live rather, right, yeah. and the will to protect the the human race. So it's a really cool thing where you have these two super powered beings just having like this casual conversation together, and they're both like kind of cool as a cucumber kind of characters. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it, so it really works. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, they come up with this plan where they're basically gonna what is this like the plank brain or something? What the hell is this? Like the dimension that Ultraman's power comes from or something that he hides in to get the beta box at the last second. I, I'm still a little confused about that aspect of it. Uh it's like that other dimension. Yeah, because we see a little bit at the end. Yeah. And he's able to grow or like you ha- he has to do some it's like quantum mechanics somehow where he can like use the beta capsule to do something like that to like split between the fabric of time uh, and space right right because the whole thing is he's going to sell the- i guess the thing is what i just said about like the- it's going to get destroyed because of yeah. this is that's ultraman's concern yeah uh and, and melfis doesn't give a fuck yeah he-, he he needs to stop the the people of earth from having the beta box right because he basically. knows like this is not going to end well no it's not uh, and so they fight. I mean, he gets the beta box and he throws it into the helicopter with the other SSSP members. Yeah. And that's a cool scene. But like Mephilus like uses it to get gigantic. Yeah. <laughs> and he fights uh, Ultraman and he whoops Ultraman's ass for a little while. The CGI is a little dodgy with his yeah. costume, but I like or, or his uh, look, I guess I should say what he really looks like. But I, mm-hmm. I like the look of it a lot. So Even, I'm kind of excusing it a little, especially the fight's really cool. It is cool. But Zarab's a little dicey because he's like half an alien, which yeah, is a little weird. He's almost like a jacket flying through the air. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's cool, it's, yeah. but yeah. Uh, but uh, Zofi show, shows up. Well, first, we got to mention that they fight in an oil refinery, because yes. of course, we got to go down the list of places <laughs> to fight in a kaiju movie. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm yeah. with it. Dude, they do a beam clash. They kick each other. The fucking oh, they air sure flies do. out. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a hockey cool. clash out of One well, Piece. They're pretty evenly matched, considering. I don't know. I think fucking Ultraman was about to lose there at the well, end there. Because yeah, Melfus uh, is doing the same move that Ultraman did to the other monster, yeah. like walking towards him and doing yeah. the beam clash. Yeah. He gets to like right up to his face and is like, oh, Zofi. Ah, yeah, I'm backing out. I'll take the beta box. Uh, yeah, have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Melfus is like, oh, okay, bye. Mm-hmm. Okay, see you later, huh? It's like, well, one of those. see you later. Yeah. And Ultraman's just like, yeah, I guess I should have probably looked behind me, but uh, all right. Yeah. Has no clue. So Zofi is from the Planet of Light. And right. He comes down to collect Ultraman. He's like, what the fuck are you doing here? He's like, you, what are you, you merged? He's out in the woods again. He's like, you merged with a human? Are you kidding me? And he's like, this is against the rules. Like, you, you look, drop this shit. Come back to the planet with me. It'll be fine. We'll, we'll for, All's forgiven. And basically Ultraman's like, nah, fuck. I, I ain't going out like that. Oh, <laughs> fuck yeah. you. So Zofi's like, well, fine. You could stay here and die. Um, I'm putting out the fucking the 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 Zeton bomb, <laughs> the ultimate celestial suppression weapon. It's like a thing. It's like a capsule. Like uh, Zofi like releases yeah. and it, like goes into the sky and like becomes a giant 
fucking like mech in this. It's like Unicron in the sky. Yeah. And again, like I don't want to keep like complaining about the CGI because I think overall it's really it's good. Okay. But Zeton really is like the budget was running out yeah. and we need to do like this incredibly in involved monster yeah. uh, uh, weapon thing. So, so the aliens have this technology and Daki specifically is like really crushed by that like he's not smart enough to figure any of this stuff out and like everything he knows is bullshit compared to all like the beta oh, yeah. the beta box and the beta capsule and all this high technology I mean, he tells ultraman straight up like we can't do anything we you're only hope. yeah you we can't do anything about this but what's so great is that um ultraman leaves him a usb yeah. usb with like the information of how the beta capsule works and all that stuff Ultraman goes to fight Zeton, gets his fucking ass handed to him. He knew he, he yeah. knew he was gonna lose, <laughs> but he almost like self sacrificed himself so that he forced he forces the SSSP to figure it out. Right, and the power of the human mind saves the human race. Power with, of the human will. The power of the say. human will. Some would say Danny Aiello's there. Yeah. He's hanging out with Jackie Chan. They're in China at the moment. The Protector. I just watched it. I was telling Joe about it. It's okay. <laughs> it all hey, comes together. It's on Tubi, along with all of the Ultraman and Super Sentai you, you, you could ever want. You could shake a stick at. Um. So, yeah. So, so Daki figures out that uh, if Ultraman releases his beta capsule at a, sp a very specific time, just as Zetan's, Zetan's bomb is about to go One off. One millisecond as it happens. He has to do it, which will tr which will open a, a black hole rift Man. dimension that will suck that whole thing, the, the 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 mech in, but Ultraman might get caught in it and he's willing to sacrifice himself. Right, and he's going to just get sent to another dimension, but they don't know where he's going to get sent. No, so he saves planet Earth. And it's a great scene. He it's comes really at this monster cool. and he's like spinning in this huge ball of energy is like Dude, around him. One of my favorite things, it's like a callback to the original series, like when he's got his fucking fist up and he's like looking up as oh, he grows yeah. bigger. Like that's something they always did to to show Ultraman grow oh, in, the, okay, in okay. the series. So I thought that was really cool. I love how he's trying to get out of the black hole. Like, ah! Yeah, he's trying to fly away yeah. and he gets stuck in there. But uh, yeah, so he's like floating in this like trippy ass psychedelic yeah. world and Zofi shows up and he's like, hey, uh, <laughs> You save those humans, like, you know, I kind of got to kill you, but I mean, I want to give you another chance. And he's like, he's basically telling him, like, why did he do that? Like, why would you sacrifice yourself and not mm. come back to the planet of light and like live your life out like you should? Um, why are you trying to save the humans? Like, they should just be destroyed because they're dangerous. And basically, you know, Ultraman comes up with the with the thing of like, he wants to stay on Earth. He wants to stay merged with Shinji um, and kind of act as the protector of Earth or like be like a force on Earth that can keep balance. Yeah, but I'm also kind of confused by that. Maybe it's a subtitle thing or I just don't understand what's happening because at the end, he's kind of like, all right, well, I'll send you back and separate you from Kamanagi's body. And I'm like, okay, but then he wakes up, but then Kamanagi wakes up. So it's like, is that Kamanagi? Is that Ultraman? But no, it's the no. same dude. No, no, he says, he says, I can separate you and just bring you home and save your life. Mm. But instead he has him keep him merged with... Uh, okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, then. he has him... He keeps him merged and puts him back in the body. Okay, I, was, I was just a little confused by that. Yeah, and then Zofi fucks off to the planet of light. Yes, and we get this great final shot of him waking up and all of the main characters standing over like, him. <gasps> and then it just fucking ends. And and well, they're like, like, welcome like, home. Yeah. <laughs> and the <laughs> music immediately kicks yeah, in for which the credits. Is, which is pretty awesome. Uh, it's... A lot of fun. I mean, I'm assuming it's right for you, but it's right for me, I guess is what I'm saying. But I did not love this movie. Um, I, I, It was good, but I felt it was kind of long. If I was a fan, I think I would have appreciated it a lot more. I think I think that's a thing. Like, this but it's was, still really good. This is made by a fan for the fans. You know sure. what I mean? So it's one of those things where, like, if you didn't know Ultraman, or, I mean, I think you can still enjoy this not oh, knowing anything yeah, you, about Ultraman. You don't need to know anything. It definitely helps, though. No, it's like the... the the origin story mm. um new ultraman like i would love to actually see a sequel i don't think it's going to happen because i don't think that's what they're trying to accomplish with these movies i'm also okay if yeah, without no, yeah. it like sure. it was a, it was a, it was an awesome um kind of i don't want to say nostalgia boost but it was like a cool way to bring this character back mm. and kind of pay homage to the series itself sure. like as a whole um i thought it was really fucking neat and um Again, the only thing that I really didn't like was like the CG. Yeah. I wish it was dudes in suits, but like it's fine. Like it looks fine. Um, I like how 
it really like plays upon like the political issues of like mm. fake news and all that kind of stuff and like being informed and all that. Well, things. I mean, they don't even tell the people the Earth they're about to be annihilated. There's no. like they could die in ignorance. No, but like even the stuff with Mephilus and like making a deal with them. Yeah. I mean, obviously bait and switching them sure. or like, you know, making a bad deal where they're like, yeah, it's really good. Like you're going to be you'll be the most powerful people in the galaxy yeah, yeah, yeah but not really because you're my fucking cattle or whatever oh, right um there's some great themes about like teamwork and like believing mm. in yourself and um you know i, I just helping think, others i think it's, yeah helping others and like the decisions to like the power of everyone versus like be one like yeah b one right yeah. because like the whole thing is like he struggles with being this like he doesn't want to be the superhero or the protector rather he wants to be a part of of the solution, not mm. the solution. Right. If that makes right. sense. No, it does make sense. Yeah. Which I thought is really cool. And it's it's got a good message. It's a ton of the kaiju shit is fun as hell. Uh the effects some while sometimes dodgy are fine. Yeah. The music's really good. The uh, the cinematography in this specifically is fucking insane. Like a lot of new ideas I've had never maybe not new, but stuff I've never seen. Like it's very experimental the mm. way this is shot. Especially like, like those shots of like when when Kamenagi's not there, yeah, and they shoot from like his seats position to see the character talking. There's like a it's interesting, yeah. There's like a shot like of somebody's face like all the way across the room, but it's like focused on some but something else. Like yeah, it's yeah. it's really interesting and engaging. And I found myself watching it. Like I'll have to watch this again because sure. I felt myself like torn because I'm trying to read the subtitles and like shit's happening so fast on screen with these like quick shots and stuff. So you want the dub, is what you're saying? No, I don't want the dub. <laughs> But, but like I need to watch it again so I know what's happening in uh, each scene specifically so that yeah. I can appreciate the way it's shot a little bit more because it's I was like uh, 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 yeah no I get you that. know but it was great um I, I thought it was great I'm and I'm so fucking excited uh with the team for this team to do uh, Sheen Common Rider um so yeah I mean again even if I didn't love it they've been knocking it out of the park I, for I, years it's, so it's, I'll, it's a I'll blast take it. it's a blast if you can get your hands on it watch it um if you missed it in theaters that's a bummer I'm sure it's coming to the states. Eventually, hopefully, the end of this year, maybe. I I'll pick I'll it up. Be, I'm going to be picking up the Blu-ray for sure. I'm curious to see the special features, to be honest. Yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to that. And so that was Shin Ultraman, and uh, we'll see you in the next right review. Yeah!